Hello, my name is V. Anton Sprawl, and I'm here to talk about thinking like a programmer. Specifically, in these videos, I'm going to be talking about problem solving, the kind we deal with as programmers. I've taught programming for many years, from introductory to advanced levels, and what I've learned is that most people learning programming struggle with this area. And I think it's the number one thing that keeps early programmers from making good progress in their development. But what is problem solving? It's a creative skill, the ability to put things together in a new way to accomplish a particular goal. I've taught lots of programmers over the years who didn't have much trouble understanding how programming languages worked, but often got stuck at this point. I could show them a program and ask them questions about it, and they could answer all those questions correctly. They could also modify working programs so they worked in a different, but related way. And they could write programs on their own if they were given detailed instructions to guide them. Where they would struggle is writing a program from scratch. That is, they've got a blank screen in their text editor and a description of what the program does, but no hints about how the program does it. A lot of students didn't know how to get started, or they got started and they got lost along the way, ran into a dead end, and didn't know how to get going again. In some cases, they were almost programming by trial and error. And it's not because they didn't understand the syntax of the programming language. They understood that fine. They just had trouble putting together the things they had learned to make a new program to solve a given problem. If this in any way sounds like you, then I've got some good news. The first piece of good news is, you're not alone. Lots of talented, accomplished programmers got stuck at this stage. In fact, the majority of my students had to deal with this at one point or another. The second piece of good news, and this is really the important thing, is that you can do something about this. Unfortunately, a lot of instruction out there, whether it's in a classroom or a book or whatever, really glosses over this problem-solving aspect. And believe me, I've been as guilty of this as anyone else. For years, I did what most teachers do, which is to have students work through as many problems as possible until they gain this problem-solving ability on their own. It's a sink-or-swim approach. And that's not to say it doesn't eventually work if the student keeps at it. But let me tell you, it's definitely the hard way, and too often, students just give up, and who can blame them? Here's the thing. Problem-solving is a skill. And like any other skill, there are systematic ways of developing it. Because it's a form of creativity, sometimes we think, well, creativity can't be taught. You're either born with it or you're out of luck. But that's not right. Problem solving is an ability we all have. Some of us may be better at it than others, but it's something we can all do if someone shows us how. So I wrote a book about problem solving called Think Like a Programmer. It starts off with some general problem-solving concepts, showing you how to apply them to programming problems. And then it looks at a lot of different areas you'll see in introductory and intermediate programming and shows how to apply these concepts to those specific areas. I think of it as a cross-training course for the mind. The programming examples in the book are written in C++, but if you haven't studied C++ yet, don't worry. We don't get into advanced aspects of the language, and if you've picked up the basics of some other programming language, you can apply what you've learned to the syntax of C++ without too much trouble. If you want more information about the book, there should be a link below. But what I'm going to do in these videos is give you some ideas to get started. To make this more fun, I'm going to use some examples that are not in the book. So even if you've picked that up, none of this will be duplication. So let's get started.